Hey folks, it's Tom, your Frugal Prepper. Still, my voice is messed up. But, um, I've been working on the engine, trying to get it all broke down and ready to go to the machine shop. Let me show you what's going on so far. So, here it is. It's broke down. Um, here I get this oil pump off of here. Uh, but I got the head off. Um, let me flip it around here for you. Leslie. Hi, you? Gonna say hi to everybody? Sure. Say hi. Hi. You're on camera, you gotta smile at them. Is it smiling? Yeah, I guess that's smiling. Alright. What do we do? So here's the engine. I'm gonna show them what's going on with it here first. Huh. So if you look down on these cylinders, there's still good cross hatch pattern. There's like literally no ridge, there's just a little bit of carbon. I mean, yeah. These cylinders look like they were just honed yesterday. I can feel the slippery oil. And even on this number two cylinder that's at top right now, it's the exact same way. They're all good. I can feel the slippery oil. I don't have a borescope to check the roundness, but they look pretty round to me. So I think this block's definitely savable. Oh, the head. Looked like everything was burning pretty good there. But right here on number two, these two exhaust valves are a little darker than the rest. Um, so that's probably a low result of the low compression and, and not burning as well. And then down here on this end, this exhaust valve looks like it's a little bit like rusty or something compared to the rest. This whole thing right here? But I think it's all savable. Right here. Which with this exhaust valve being a little bit more beat up here with your hand um, That would explain why this one had a little bit lower compression than the other two It was in the 170 range and then these other two were like 180 and 185 So yeah, definitely we'll Send the head out to get machined and then I'm gonna have them You know hot tank magna flux uh, you know, bore if need be, hone, and turn the crank, and uh, replace all freeze plugs, and then uh, we'll get it built back up after that's done. So right now I'm going to get the oil pump off, I still got to get the water pump off too, um, and just start tearing it down. I can't wait to get this, since the cylinder looks so good. Um, it's got to be like some cracked ring. I can't wait to get that out of there and see what's up with those rings. So I'll show you once we get it out of there. Not, oh, you know, collecting parts. Just trying to keep things organized in, in bags like for bolts and generally in boxes and stuff. But yeah. Fun times. I love this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get the oil pump off of this guy, and then I'll be back. Hey folks, it's Tom. So I've got the uh, pistons out. They're over here laid in order. Um, so cylinder 2 did not have any cracked rings. The rings don't really look excessively worn. The piston looks fine. But what I found... I don't know, I would almost think this wouldn't be enough to cause that big of an issue. Uh, let me see if I can get some better light here. If you can see it. But there is some minor scoring and just a tiny bit of pitting right there. You can see those like score marks and then there's, I don't know, like three little pits right there. And, you know, you can tell there's a little more wear on one side of this cylinder than there is on the other. I don't see that evidenced on any other cylinder. So, th this cylinder must be the cause of my compression issues. And we'll just, we'll let them, we'll, we'll see what the machine shop says. Now, if the machine shop says that wouldn't have caused it and there's really no problems, major problems with this cylinder... Then I gotta worry, do I have maybe a crack in that piston or, or the, the seat's not right or something? And I may just go ahead and do new pistons even if they're standard size. But we'll we'll see what the machine shop finds. 
So really all I got to do is get the water pump off, get the crankshaft out, and get this uh, PVC breather thing off. Um, so I had a little bit of a mishap last night. This uh, bolt here, this bolt went in my balance shaft assembly. Where is it at? It's somewhere. Oh, it's over here. So right here where this balance shaft sprocket goes is this bolt. And uh, I knew it was um, reverse threaded. I read it beforehand. I was busting things apart with the impact. And I forgot that this was reverse threaded, man, and I hit it on the, with the impact, and it snapped the head right off that bolt. Right there. So, luckily, I was able to get in there with a punch and a hammer and work this bolt out pretty easily once I turned it in the right direction. So, you can't buy that from GM or anywhere. GM lists it as a part, but it's not available any longer. So, what I'm going to have to do is go find a donor engine at the junkyard, find something that's got a rock knock in or locked up or whatever, and yank the pan off and get that out. But if that's the only thing that goes really wrong, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, the crank actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. But it looks, the journals on it look great. Oh, I had a bearing out here for y'all to look at what I do with it. So, here is one of the bearings. I mean, it's not worn down to the brass. It's really not in bad shape at all. It's a little sign of a little bit of wear right at the bottom there. But those bearings look really good. So, I'm, I'm happy with that. They all look about like that or maybe even be a little better. So, I'm going to go ahead and like bag these pistons up and number them because they don't have numbers on the connecting rod journals. All the engines I've ever built before have the connecting rod journals labeled with like they're stamped with the piston or the cylinder number. These aren't, but um, I know the orientation by where the markings are on the side, there's a little O stamped in it. So I know which way those went in the engine and I know that the side of the uh, journal that has the oil port or the bearing that has the oil port is faces the exhaust side of the engine so I can get those all back in the same way and then um, I'll probably just do a little minor cleanup on this with some brake clean and I'll probably go ahead and clean this gasket surface off for the machine shop um, but sometimes the machine shops are happier they, they work a little harder on your stuff if you bring it to them and it's not like dripping grease that's how it's going. I'm going to go ahead and get this crankshaft and stuff out of here, and I'll probably do a quick video after I get that done. Just working on it for an hour or two every night after work. Okay, well, it's uh, ready to go to the machine shop. Um, I just kind of put a nice light coating of oil over everything. I cleaned up that head gasket a little bit, and I buttoned it up with the oil pan on the bottom. Um, I did make another mistake to rookie. So um, I tried to take a dowel pin out on the bottom where the balance shaft goes and I kind of snapped it off. So I'm sure the machine shop can fix it. This is going to be more money. But that's okay. I should have just left it on there and not worried about it. There was two of them. I stopped after I broke the first one. So... Um, the crank is out. It's sitting over here. So um, I'm ready to get that thing to the machine shop on Saturday morning. Uh, the, the garage is a little bit messed up right now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so tomorrow I'm just going to clean up and organize. The main bearings in this thing look great, though, by the way. No, 
no problems with those either. So, good crank anyway. Um, hopefully they can fix my uh, mistake on the dowel pin thing. And they, I'm sure they got all the special tools and stuff to do that. And hopefully they can uh, I can find that uh, balance shaft bolt. And that's that's the only two things I screwed up so far. <clears throat> so there's a lot of little bolts and pieces. These are not the easiest engines to tear apart and rebuild, man. This is no 2300 Ford from 1982. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, you know, I got boxes full of parts. I got my uh, pistons all in bags there. But everything's numbered. So I'm trying to keep everything organized. So it'll make reassembly a little easier. But uh, we'll take it from here. I guess uh, probably the next video on this will be when it gets back from the machine shop. And uh, we'll talk about what they did and what happened with it. All right, so kind of hot out here. I got to turn the air conditioning off when I turn the camera on. You can't hear me, so that's my air conditioning down there. So um, I'm tired. I'm ready to go in and get some sleep and go back and do more work again tomorrow at work. So I'll talk to you all later, everybody. Be happy. Be frugal out there, and I'll see you later.